All right, I said I was going to do a review of these guitars. This is the, the newest variant of the Charvel DK Pro Mods. And the more I put it off, the more likely it is I'm never going to do it. So here's just a quick and dirty run through of these instruments and uh, what they have to offer. So what is this guitar, first of all? Well, it is a Pro Mod DK 24HH 2PT CM. What does that actually mean in human speak? It is a production High, high volume production model, DK Dinky Body, which is, you know, the classic Jackson Charvel downsized Strat style body, 24, 24 fret neck, fingerboard rather, HH, double humbuckers, two point Goto Vibrato, Goto, and uh, CM for caramelized maple neck and fingerboard or baked maple or roasted maple whatever you know whatever they're all they're synonymous okay here are the specs it's got an alder body how can i describe this neck profile it's like a shallow c think about it like this okay so if you're familiar with the ibanez necks if you remember the wizard threes of uh of like the the audis and like 2010s um it's kind of like that but with a more rounded back similar thickness um but with rolled fingerboard edges so it's a pretty comfortable neck i like it for a shredder, for a shred style guitar, um, it's got a thicker neck. But compared to other guitars in general, and even super strats, it's got a it's got a relatively thin neck. It's got a 12 to 16 inch conical or compound radius. So near the nut, it's 12 inches, 12 inch radius, kind of like a Les Paul, and then it flattens out as you get up to the bridge. You can have the action super low and still be able to get your bends off when you're up in the higher register. You get some big bends because you're not fretting out. Uh, other specs. Again, got the Goto 501. It's classic. You see this on a lot of like super strats. Tom Anderson's use them. I don't know if Suras, Suras do use these. I'm pretty sure. Um, it's a good bridge. It's stable. It's solid. A tusk nut. Very slippery material as far as nuts go. Honestly though, any guitar I get that has a, a recessed vibrato, so it has to float, I put like a, a trim stopper in there so it's down only. That basically ensures to me that the, the bridge will always return to zero. It'll always be in tune. It's reliable and it's stable, but under the conditions that I have placed it. Your mileage may vary. It's got this sculpted heel. It's pretty comfortable. Compared to the AZ's sculpt, and I compare it to the AZ because Let's get real guys, this is this is an AZ competitor. I'd say this is more comfortable just from the fact of it being thinner. Okay, electronics wise, we got five-way switch and then a series parallel switch in the neck and Alnico 2 Pro with double hex screws, which is uh, unusual. And then we also have a full shred. Interesting pickup choice for this guitar. Uh, not very full sounding, especially in an alder body strat, but very articulate. Good for runs. Um, definitely has a mid scoop. Okay, uh, one thing I see people complain about a lot in like forums is that the, the volume pot is too easy to spin, that it feels cheap. That's a feature. <laughs> you might not like that feature, but it, it, is, uh, it is purposefully done. This is a Bourne's low friction pot, so it's, it's easy to turn. You know, just watch, watch your hand, you know? <laughs> but I get it, if that's a problem, it's easy enough to change it out for another 500K uh, volume, all right? We also have a no load tone. When it's at 10, it's almost as if it's removed from the circuit, so you get a little bit more presence, you get a little bit more full spectrum to the signal, you know, to the tonality, to the timbre of what's coming through. It's hard to describe, but it, there is a difference between having a no load tone pot of the same value with the same capacitor. There's a difference between having that circuit and then just having a normal a normal pot wired up. The best way to describe it is a normal pot on 10 is like having a no load tone circuit on nine. Okay, let's go through some switching.
going to put both humbuckers in uh, parallel. Okay, uh, now let's just do some drive, position one. Honestly, this is where I normally stay on this guitar. I, I like this sound so much. Anyway, I think in general, for like a super strat type guitar, for under a thousand dollars, you can't do better. As far as features and, and build quality goes, you could buy parts and make a parts caster. Even then, you'd be close to the price of this. So sub 1K, this is this is where it's at. Uh, even if you don't like use a lot of technical proficiency in your playing, excellent guitars, man. Very versatile, just all rounders. I had two of these. I had a pink one and this one, uh, and the pink one went back because this one was just so much better. I wanted to keep the pink one. That's like one of my favorite colors. But uh, this one was just constructed better. It had uh, more resonance to the body and uh, neck. The fretwork on this was just better from the factory, so I just went with it. Of the four DK2PT CMs that I've had, only one was not great. It was still good. I just couldn't get the action where I wanted it to be. And you know, since then, I've come to the realization that Having super duper low action that I'm used to is actually hindering my technique, so maybe I could have made do with the AZs that I had. <laughs> but that's that's neither here nor there. Compared to the Indonesian, maybe they've got it under control now. Maybe they have the QC down a little bit better, but compared to all the AZ premiums that I've played from the first run, um, these have been superior. Even the one that was just good, they've all been superior in the way they feel. You might notice there's a Band-Aid on this guitar. It's because the finish is thin. The finish is thin, guys. Um, if you're hard on your instruments, you're gonna have a, a pretty battle-scarred instrument very, very soon. And if you sweat a lot, that's gonna be problematic for you too. I would suggest you get one of the gloss finished ones. I think the only problem, and it's not a real problem, but the only thing that's holding these Pro Mods back is that they refuse to put stainless steel frets on these. I think if they did that, they could even bump the price up to where the premium AZs are, so like $1,200. These would kill, and stainless steel frets, it's kind of like a mark of quality for your instrument. And I think that turns a lot of people off of these. They don't have stainless, but the fret work is good. Frets last me a long time because I don't do a lot of bending, and I, uh, you know, I wipe my instruments down, and I don't sweat a lot when I play, uh, even when I'm playing hard. But even still, even if you're playing a lot, you know, a few months minimum before you might think about getting recrowned, right? A uh, level of recrown. And that's if you play an insane amount. So I'll, you know, don't let that be a, a factor keeping you away from trying these. Especially if you never, if you don't really know why stainless frets are, are so awesome. I remember the first time I played stainless steel frets on guitars when I bought my first Parker. This was a, a long time ago. I didn't know why it felt so good to bend and why after owning it for so long the frets never tarnished. They never started getting flat spots. I started to learn more about the instrument and it's like, oh, that's because they're stainless steel frets. So. That is the advantage of stainless, and they, I wish Charvel would put stainless frets on the Pro Mods. As of right now, you have to go to Custom Shop to get that, and that's like $3,000. So $2,000 more with essentially the exact same feature set and specs. So, 
They should just do it, man. All right, I'm gonna end it here, guys. Not very, not very informative as usual, but uh, you know, I try. <laughs>